Okay, so this morning's video is gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna be talking teas. Yes, teas, I said it. In particular, that tea. Are you getting that? Let's get a focus, get off my head. Strangest looking tea peg I've ever seen. Introduced to it a couple of weeks ago. Someone said it launches higher, it spins lower, carries further. It's a revolutionary tea peg, or is it? We're about to find out. choice of tea peg has always come down to how I like to see the um, the club head ball tea height at address simple as that so what's easy on my eye what I like to see and I've never been a fan of the kind of tea it high let it fly I don't like teeing that ball up really high on the tea I always feel mentally it's just got that uh, ability to go more wayward don't ask me why but that's always been my thought process so I'm a kind of I'm a pink castle tea kind of man. However, a few weeks back, I did a does a correct tea height matter? And in that video, I found out that yeah, it does. It makes, I suppose quite obviously, there are different implications that it has on your ball flight or your conditions or launch conditions, for example. So I found out that in my instance, I produced actually better numbers consistently with the orange tea peg, so that's slightly higher tea. Two weeks ago, I was introduced to somebody who told me about this tea. This tea has got a slight, as you can see, a slight angle in towards you, and it's at an angle pointing slightly upwards. So theoretically, it makes plenty of sense that this ball is gonna launch higher. We're gonna meet it on an upward blow and potentially decrease our spin number as well, which in some instances could assist people. So I'm gonna find out, not necessarily is the tea going to help anybody because i think that would be down to the individual and how you deliver the club and perhaps what you struggle with do you struggle with launch off the tee do you struggle with club head speed do you hit a more descending blow off the tee with driver so i'm not going to review it in that sense i'm just going to see does it do what it says on the tin and i'm going to put it up against this tee here it's exactly the same tee height it just doesn't have that lean towards you and that slight would upward um, tilt if you like on the top of the T peg so that's what we're going to do I'm going to as ever move this camera get the old G400 max out and start whacking some balls down this range we're going to collect some data and see if this T peg is in fact a revolution or not right we're going to start off with the golf T that's this uh, one with the tilt towards it the golf T okay um, first thing to note when you set it up as in tee the ball up into the ground it does seem to angle slightly towards you and the interesting thing is i'll throw up some images now is when i put the club head behind the ball address there's very much three quarters of the ball first of all that is uh, visible above the top line of the club head itself but it almost leans towards you and you almost seem to lean back with it which is something that automatically creates this sort of upward blow onto the ball at delivery. So for me, first of all, there's a mental implication with this T, irrelevant of its performance in terms of what it does. There's, there's something about it that makes you, like I said, I'm almost leaning back with the T at address and I find that weird in the sense of what I do and I'd love, maybe this is one for team average to try out actually, because uh, maybe I'm just uh, lost the plot here a little bit, but it does seem to be all of a sudden I'm sort of leaning back at address and I think that's interesting. Um, I think I just need to hit some golf balls really and collect some data We're on GC2. We are with TP5 golf balls, G400 max driver. Let's see what happens. There's that lean backwards. There's the ball falling off the tee. Not easy to tee up in these mats, I can tell you. Oh, 
I can certainly tell you. Are we good to go? Yes, we are. Right, try again. First ball suggests it launches higher. The tees flew over there somewhere. I'm going to find that. Uh, that just went absolutely into the clouds. And for me, like I said, I've hit a few balls off camera and they've tended to do that. I've not recorded any data as yet, but I think there's a lot of common sense to sort of suggest that the way this tee peg is set up, yes, it is going to launch higher. The interesting thing for me is how much does it launch differently to the tee peg we're going to put it up against. Anyway, I think I'm going to hit some more golf balls, collect some data, and then we'll stick the other tee peg in the ground and see what difference a tee peg makes in terms of your launch conditions. Okay, so in terms of information, let me just confirm that the T that I was using was a Pride Evolution Hybrid. Uh, interestingly enough, they claim to be the number one T on the PGA Tour. And that was that T here. Um, they were exactly the same T height, three and a quarter inch T's. Um, so in terms of T height, identical for this comparison. Um, talk about the orange T first of all, in terms of feedback. I think that we'll get into the numbers very, very quickly. For me, what I liked about it was the way in which it was set up. I said when I, when I got behind the golf ball, it almost gave me that sort of tilt, that lean backwards and encourage an upward blow on the ball. And that's, um, for some people, I think that could be a really positive move to be quite honest with you, particularly those people who struggle with launching a golf ball with driver. And I think that's something I'll mention very shortly. But for now, let's just get into the numbers that are produced with the orange tee, the revolutionary tee, as I'm gonna call it. Uh, Ball speed was 142 on average. It quite a few balls here to try and get a fair uh, look at this thing. Launched at 18.4 and barring two balls, they were all sort of launching above sort of 17.5 degrees. So yes, it was launching high. And as I said, from vis visibly what I seen, it was off into the clouds. Um, backspin on average 2431. So a real good spin number, not overly different from what I regularly produce. Peak height at 43 yards, so once again, like I said, very much up into the clouds, 244 on average carry. In terms of what it achieved, um, yes, it did exactly what it said on the tin. It did launch the ball very high. The spin number was as I would want it to be. It was very, very good, but I've achieved that with different tee heights as well, so it wasn't all about the uh, tee height in terms of that spin number. Um, and that peak height was, like I said, very, very high, which could be a positive and a negative, depending on whose hands it's in and where you're playing. Um, next set of numbers, let's get on to this next T, because it's all about a comparison, first of all. Uh, ball speed was identical at 142, so great for comparison reasons. 18.1 launch, and again, there's a couple of balls in there. There was more variables in terms of launch with this T, um, arguably all down to delivery from me. I don't have, unfortunately, on GC2, I don't have the ability to look at um, angle of attack, um, which would have helped. And yeah, it's hard to argue how many of the variables in that launch angle were down to my swing, but I did hit a lot of balls with the first tee, and it was very consistently high launching. Spin at 2349, and once again, the spin dropped off the charts with this tee at times. Um, peaking at 40 yards of height, um, again, more variables, I would say, in terms of height, carrying at 246, right in the number where I'd expect to be. My assessment would be simple. T height makes a difference to launch angle. There is no doubt about that for me. I think that we'd always, and, and that might be good or bad, dependent on what you currently do, what your problems are. I played with golf with someone yesterday. I played at a Lynx track and they launch driver very, very low indeed. And in the summer months, that's a fantastic thing because it runs for miles. What I would say is moving forward from this month on, that same player struggles because the carry distance is minimal and the run is minimal. So therefore he's really penalized in terms of the launch that's achieved. And I think that by adjusting T height may be a way of increasing launch. But I do think what we've got to consider is obviously angle of attack is always gonna be key to how this ball launches, but that's what 
also I think about the Orange Revolutionary T, it just encouraged for me a slightly different setup and address with driver just to remember to get you into that position and it did encourage that more upward blow, upward strike maybe just for me personally and in a in a mental visible thing that i seen and that's where i'd like to get this tested if you think it's a good idea by team average a number of golfers out there from different levels um, different swing speeds different handicaps as we've done in the previous video and i think it'd be a really interesting one to see how it affected a number of people in terms of their launch conditions and whether or not they seen it as a benefit and something that could help them or not the real thing was to say, is this tea revolutionary? The answer to that question is no, it's not. But what it does do, it does achieve what it sets out to do, which is launch the ball higher and spin the ball possibly lower. Uh, but again, that's about the angle of attack. And I think that angle of attack is definitely amended, altered, adjusted, whatever the word is, because of the angle of the tea as well. So I think there's definite possibilities that that tee or tees of that height could help certain golfers i do genuinely believe that could possibly be the case i know that for me on a personal level when i tee it high my worry is this tee it high let it fly it's yeah let it fly but where it can often be just that it all gets a little bit more wayward with the higher tee peg and i think you perhaps lose a little bit of control over the ball uh, but without doubt if you're going out for all out distance and length then teeing it higher does possibly help you achieve that like i said not the most scientific of studies but i hope you enjoyed it it was interesting for me personally i would without doubt next time i go out on a golf course i think i will start to vary the t height that i put my driver at, at certain times as well depending on whether i'm playing up or down wind for one example but uh, it's not something i mess around with that greatly but it definitely does impact on your launch conditions there is no doubt about that anyway like i said not the most scientific bit of fun take from it what you will i definitely think that if you're struggling with launch if you struggle with carry distance with driver and launch ball particularly low then i definitely think that adjusting your t height could have some positive gains for you but it'd be interesting to see feedback i'm looking for is this have you tried different t height yourself and has it made a difference to your own personal performance with driver and secondly would you like to see this these T heights, different T's tested by team average and seeing what impact it has over a broader spectrum of players as opposed to just me here this morning. Or is this video just a bit too non-scientific for you? Anyway, that's a little question for you. As ever, thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below. I get sick of asking this, I swear to God. And subscribe if you don't already. But anyway, either way, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I'll see you soon.